Very few people decide to pursue combat sports, and those who do usually get involved well before their mid-twenties. But Kendrick Jones, however, has found his passion as a fighter and is now full-heartedly pursuing a career as an amateur boxer. Training daily as well as offering classes at a local gym, the Kendrick works diligently improving himself as well as bringing his love of the sport to others. Please join me as we find shelter from a thunderstorm and meet the Kendrick Jones. So I'm sitting here with uh, the Kendrick Jones. He's a uh, amateur boxer down here in Rust, Texas. And uh, I'll let him introduce himself real quick and just kind of what he does. All right, well, you know, like he said, my name is Lakitchik Jones, and I do boxing. I've been doing it for about two or three years now. Self-trained on December 12th, honestly. Like, I didn't think, I didn't think I was going to get, you know, that far. Because, I mean, what's crazy is that uh, how I started out, uh, I was at a sister's, my sister's old house with some friends. And they have some gloves in the back of the car or something. And when the gloves got put on my hands, it's like, it was like a switch that turned on inside of me. And I didn't think I had that kind of talent until it showed. Yeah. And after that, I was just, I was having fun with it. But at the same time, I was dominating. <laughs> at the same time. And then, and then when I got home, I started really thinking about it. I asked myself, how, hey. Like, the, the, despite of the many years of, you know, everything I've done, whatever, I did not know I was going to ha- I did not know I had a talent like this. I've just never been the one to, you know, like fight or whatever. But yeah. I feel like that boxing has gave me the self-confidence that I knew I had, but I just never embraced it. It just boosted it up. So... Therefore, I'm grateful and blessed to not only do do this sport, I mean, just for the love of it, but I'm so thankful for all of, you know, the folks that I met uh, throughout the years and and whatnot. You know, been getting some good, getting good advice, got the best knowledge from veterans, you know, things like that, and and it actually made me a, a better fighter than I thought I was. Than, than who I was supposed to be. Yeah. So let, let's go back. You said that, you know, this all started a couple of years ago. You're just at a party. So was there like any time as a kid you're watching like Rocky and Creed and you're like, I want to do this or? Uh, I don't think I never really heard about Rocky, but I was growing <laughs> up until like at at least in my 20s when I started discovering, uh, you know, those movies. Yeah. Like, so, I've always like, I've always like loved Sylvester Stallone. You know, like in the Rambo movies, The Expendables <laughs> or whatever. But I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know he was in Rocky. I didn't. I did not know at that time until I got introduced to it. Yeah. So so this like no no idea about fighting or mm-hmm. plans on fighting or anything up until that point. No, it was never really uh, on my mind growing up. All that was on my mind was like basketball things like that because i used <laughs> yeah. to play basketball when i was uh in when i was a kid and going forward you know into going like into high school or whatever i started i played my uh i played like at least four years of basketball there and i thought to myself boxing boxing wasn't my first love basketball was before boxing but I had dreams of, you know, like being in the NBA, things like that, because basketball was my first love. But it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. But that's OK. Yeah, because I was I wasn't complaining about it. You know, it is what it is. So. So when you said you were self-trained. Yes, sir. So. So what does that mean for you? It means you start out on your own pretty yeah. much like. I learned the basic moves um, by myself, mm-hmm. but in order for me to master those moves, I need to go to someone that uh, that that knows that, that knows the game better than I do. Yeah. And since I've been doing that, my fight my fight skills have improved just by at least 
this much like yeah <laughs> so so kind of take me on that journey from like you're self-trained and everything you're training by yourself mm-hmm. like do you like approach somebody at a gym how, how do you move up to that next level well all i know is well when i step in there if i if i got asked to step into the ring spar whatever of course i'm not gonna back down I'll, I'll i'll step in there even if i'm a beginner I will learn things that I've never really worked on before. And going forward, if I go back in there again, I know exactly what to do. Yeah. So you're just kind of trial and error, learning it as you go along and stuff? Yeah. So when did you, like, did you, like, immediately after that experience at the party start seeking out uh, fights and stuff, I guess? Well, not at that time, no. But I've just been training uh, throughout that whole time I started self-training. And going forward, I decided to uh, kind of put myself out there, like on social media, you know. Mm. You know the videos that everybody would see that I post, like on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, or TikTok, wherever. I decided to put myself out there. And, of course, you know, I didn't get – I might not have had a lot of recognition, but, I mean, I had some, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, but but then after that, it just went up because, like, I've been getting looked at from like different different folks in the boxing community, uh, like veterans, um, coaches, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I also met a a professional fighter myself, and well, his name is uh, Jerion Campbell, which everybody calls him Mad Dog, the guy that runs on the highway in Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was like, like two or three months ago, I was preparing for my first Golden Gloves fight. I met him at that gym on January. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, you know, he taught me things that I didn't, I didn't know I had or I didn't know uh, at the time that that I needed to work on, whatever. You know, he was, like, a pretty pretty cool guy. You know, he showed me the ropes. Like, took me under his wing. Uh, I just, from here on there, my skills have been, you know, a lot better because of him. And, you know, others around, too. Yeah. Things like that. But So, you mentioned how uh, boxing kind of gave you the self-confidence that you didn't have. Yeah. So is that like cuz you mentioned, you know, other sports like basketball and stuff. Yeah. What what was it that was different about boxing to playing basketball or anything else you've pursued? Well, only difference is that basketball did give me, you know, confidence, but it didn't really give me like self-confidence, like whatever, but I decided to transition to, uh to boxing because at the time, I've never been, like I said, I've never been the one to, you know, like, start a fight. Because I, I don't really start fights. Because mm-hmm. that's just out, <laughs> out of the question. But I just never been the one to get into fights or whatever. Like, believe it or not, growing up, I used to get beat up. And I used to fight, too. I either won or lost, but I used to get beat up before. But then growing up, like, I, I told myself, if I don't know how to defend myself now, I'm like... I'm just going to mess around let folks beat on me, try to walk all over me, thinking that they have an easy target. So that's when I decided to get into boxing to better defend myself. And not not only just myself, but, you know, my loved ones, people that I'm really close with. And, I mean, I did join the sport, you know, to better defend myself. But what I didn't know is that I had that I had that talent. I didn't know I had that talent at that time. It just, it just came at me just like that. Yeah. It just ran up on me. Yeah. I didn't know I had it. So, you, uh, you know, start pursuing this and stuff. So, mm-hmm. did you have any like set matches like early on? Well, Can you remember any of those? I didn't. I didn't <laughs> have. I didn't have any. Uh, because I started in twenty twenty one. I didn't have no matches uh, in twenty twenty two because. My skill set, it was none like the other. Like, I was putting in the work at least four or five hours a day at the gym or at home working out by myself. 
whenever I can't really go to a gym or whatever. Mm. But I don't use that as an excuse not to put in the work because you got to put in the work no matter where you go, no matter where you at. And I think that's what separates my work ethic uh, from others. Like, I would say that in this sport, it, it ain't easy. It's not because people get punched in the head. Yeah, you get you, you get punched <laughs> in the head. Like you get brain trauma, stuff like that. And like at least, like I don't I don't know the exact number, but uh, there's been a few fighters that died from last year to a few this year. Like I said, I don't know the exact numbers, but mm-hmm. this comes to show that boxing really is a dangerous sport. Like you can't just step in there and think that it's gonna be easy because it's not. You're gonna get you're gonna get hit to the head, to the body, or you're just gonna get hit somewhere you've never been hit before, and that's unexpected. Yeah. So I never really like I don't really just go into that ring and say this is gonna be easy because I know it's not. All I do is I step in there, win or lose. As a warrior, I'm going to go out there and give it everything I got. Yeah. So, given the uh, risks and stuff, like, what is it that makes you want to pursue this sport? (laughs) Hmm. (sighs) Honestly, I don't know, but but I felt like this is something that I was called to do. Mm-hmm. Even at a late age, which is like, well, 22, because that's when I started. <laughs> but I feel like this is something. You're an old man in yeah. boxing, right? <laughs> but th- yeah. But this is something that I feel like that I should have been doing a long time ago. But. Yeah. You but just yeah. had that drive. Yeah, I just had that drive, that worth acting. Um, I, j- I just haven't. Like, even being, even while being hurt. Or even while getting hurt, I still I still bust my butt. Yeah. I, I do I do what I do. I do what I can. Cause nothing comes easy. Yeah. So, um, you you've started kind of into now you're training other people mm-hmm. and stuff. So, at what point did you have the confidence to where you're like my skill set level is up high enough I can start training people? Well, I've always been a natural born leader myself, you know. Like if if I say people my age or younger than me need some advice about something like that, I may not be the best advice giver, but you know, I'll <laughs> I'll give what I can. I'll do what I can. Yeah. But I can't I can't make that responsibility for you. I can't take that action for you. That's on you. I can only tell you what you need to do. Yeah. So what what do the classes look like? Are they geared towards fighting or well, is it's, it well, it's more fitness in yeah, general? Or? Yeah, it's uh, fitness and uh, and it's more well, well cardio too. And this is like me. It's like uh, breaking breaking down the simple uh, simple factors of like how to punch, how to move. How to uh, use your footwork, you know this and that, mm-hmm. and the whole shebang. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what, what's like? I, I'm a new guy coming in. You fine? I, I, I know nothing, you know. So, how would that process look like? How would the classes go from that point? Well, like I said, it's been like a slow start, but like I, I have a feeling that it'll go from here on up. I, I pray on it every day. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm more like for somebody who's interested in, mm-hmm. in coming to the classes. Yeah. Like, what what what's the first class going to consist of? Like, are you just gauging their abilities, fitness level, kind mm-hmm. of stuff? Well, at, at the like when I start, I got warm up exercises they do and whatnot, and after that, I kind of break down like, you know certain punches like say the jab the mm. jab is the first hand you would want to throw first because that sets up any combination that you were thinking of throwing like you can't just like use your uh your dominant hand to start you have to use your left or right hand whichever hand you're best with that, that that's the one punch that starts off every combination the jab yeah and 
<sighs> and most folks think, no, uh, the hook, the cross, the uppercut starts it off. No, it's the jab. Yeah. You like you can hide you you can hide uh, the right or left hand, but but in order to get the right or left hand, whatever you need to use your jab to set it up. Like you can't just like throw it from a crazy angle because you can make yourself look stupid. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that may be the answer to my next question. But like, what is the most important person thing? For a person who's starting out in boxing and stuff to know. Well, you know, just just take your time with it. You know, just learn the basic fundamentals. Like, don't just think that you could just walk up in there thinking you have it all down when you really don't. Mm-hmm. So you, you always got to work up fundamentals. You know, they say fundamentals is key. Yeah. It really is. Like, how you think I got so good? <laughs> I, I worked on my fundamentals. Like I, I listen well to my trainers, coaches, and sparring partners. Anybody else that give me, you know, the best advice. Like, then that's how my fundamentals. Uh, that's how my fundamentals are so good because you gotta be willing to listen. Because mm-hmm. if you're just talking, then you're not listening. Yeah, you have to go in without any kind of preconceived ideas. Uh, so what what was like the biggest thing for you to learn when you you started this journey? Oh, well, I would say, uh, in my mind, I thought, yeah, this is probably gonna be the easiest things I've ever done in my life, but it wasn't the case <laughs> because when I got in there, yeah, this was not gonna be easy because. You know, you have to be willing to step in there because, you know, boxing is like a boxing is a life or death uh, type of thing. Like you got to be willing to go in there and give it everything you got. Yeah. And me, of course, like in sparring, I've been punched maybe so many times to the head. Not as hard, but I felt it. But for some reason, I've always I've always stood standing. Always. Yeah. Like you gotta have that warrior mentality. Like if you just go in there and just have that soft mentality, then you're not gonna survive. Not not one bit. So uh trying to think where a good question to go from here is. So in, in your experience and stuff, have you seen people come in with that soft mentality? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, maybe at least a few times, but other than that, well, yeah, like I said, I've only seen a few people come in there like that, but most of them actually come in there to learn, so that's great. But yeah. like, you can't just like walk in there and think that when you if you get hit, you go to whine, you go to cry or whatever. I mean, you don't want to join the sport. Nobody told you to, or nobody asked you to. You decided you wanted to try it out, and. That this what comes with it. You're gonna get punched. You're gonna get. You're gonna get this. You're gonna get that. <laughs> but it's I like once you start something, like you can't you can't go back. You just yeah. can't. Yeah. So we kind of talked about it off camera, but uh, wh- what is like the biggest mi- misconception people have about fighters? It's actually really sad that although I may be a fighter myself, you know, folks think that or folks would just stay away from me, things like that, because they think just because I'm a fighter, they think I'm going to just like anytime I approach them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit them or something. But no, that's not the case. I'm a class act outside of the ring and everybody knows that. Yeah. And the only time I'll be able to hit you is when is when you swing first. That's it. I won't hit you for no reason. And whatnot. So, like I said, I'm a class act outside of the ring. Everybody sees and knows that. And and like I said, it is sad that you know fighters get judged. You know because of we because of you know since they're fighters, things like that. People tend to stay away from them. Tend not to talk to them. Things like that. But honestly, 
I honestly that that is sad though, but still, like you should never judge someone uh, before you get to know them. Doesn't matter uh doesn't matter who or what they are. Yeah. So kind of to spin off of that mm-hmm. because it is what what is kind of the culture for people in the fighting community? Like how does it differ from other sports or your other experiences? Yeah. I say they're, they're they're more supportive. Like honestly, like you could probably have like one of the best, you could probably have one of the worst days of your life. But when you step into the gym, you know, with your boxing family, gym family, whatever, then they they make you feel loved there, even though y'all really go at it in the ring or train together. But but the love and energy is right there. It just depends on which gym you walk into. Yeah. So so if you can, can you kind of uh, expand on that? Like, have you had experiences with gyms that have this kind of negative mentality uh let's see i think for one uh i think jacksonville kind of has something like that just a little bit yeah but not always but there has been a little bit at the time just a little bit so so how did that like manifest itself like how how did you notice you you could tell you could tell just by the look or the body language when they walk in you could just like tell yeah what, what what is it? Is it sort of like looking down at other people who aren't on their level, or yeah? And not only that, but you know, just walking in, being cocky, things like that, saying cocky things, this and that. Like I I notice it from just right from the bat, but I don't say nothing because I'm not I'm not cocky myself. I'm not because I I know what happens when you get cocky or overconfident. You know, mm-hmm. things happen. So I tend to keep my confidence level at a certain level. Because I know I got confidence in myself. I believe I do. I've always believed that I did. But I always keep it at a certain level to where I don't get overconfident. Because that can affect my mentality when I go into the ring. So I just keep it at a certain level. I make sure I keep it there. Mm. So would you say that... Uh, it, it's a lack of self confidence that kind of breeds that atmosphere, or what? What do you think brings that I, on? I think it's, I think it's a, a lack of self confidence. At least that's what, at least that's what I've, uh, or what I've saw or seen or experienced, whatever. From my point of view, that, that, that's what I think. Yeah, but not everybody has, you know, that lack of confidence. It's just, I think. I think folks will probably. I think folks will have like maybe bad days because we all have bad days. Yeah. But when you walk into the gym or whatever, it's like that bad day that you had when you walked in there, it goes away. Like literally, it goes away just like that, or it stays. It just depends on who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can have maybe a bad day or one of the worst days of my life. The next thing you know, I step into the gym. It just it goes away just like that. It just goes away. All I gotta do is put on some bad gloves, whatever. I hit the bag or practice or whatever. That worst day is gone. It's 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 not mentioned anymore. It's not talked about. Just it's just me myself and I in the ring, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, cause I'm out of intelligent uh, questions. You fine? If there's a- a- anything you want to talk about, if there's like you want to plug your business and stuff like that go right ahead man um uh, not exactly but i will say this never give up yeah. you know i keep grinding for what you want what you love and hey who knows it's gonna come you just gotta let it come to you at the right time like don't don't just wait for it like go for it seize the opportunity because remember we only get one shot in this life so you might as well take it now or regret it for the rest of your life. Yeah. So therefore, that's all I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do, I do have one uh, semi-coherent question. Okay. And I should have asked this earlier, but what what is the next goal for you? Where do you want to see yourself go to next? Well, I, w- I would like to fight a lot more this year because I did have my first fight like two months ago. 
How did that go? Uh, well, believe it or not, uh, it feels like I was in hostile territory because the fight that I had was at Longview. Yeah. And, and I knew for a fact that when I stepped in there, I knew that the odds were like against me because I wasn't really the favorite or whatever. But I did have a few folks from down here make the trip just to see me, uh, you know, do what I love to do. Yeah. And uh, when I stepped into that ring, like I was nervous at the time outside of it. But when I stepped in there, the nerves just went away. And, you know, I prayed before that bell rung. The next thing you know, the action starts. <laughs> and it was it was against a guy that was like literally six three. Yeah. I at least six foot three. And of course he had the height and the the height and reach advantage over me, but I had the skill set. I'm I am i am athletic, uh I'm pretty quick and um I'm fundamental, I'm just like I'm offensive and defensive minded at times. But but when I see it I, 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 you know, I, I take it on. Like, I just, like, if it feels like I'm going to get hit, I know which way to move. I don't know which way to turn. And if I have, if I have that opportunity to hit him exactly where I want to hit him, I just, I take it. Yeah. I just do that. But I don't just walk to him because when <laughs> you walk in, then it's trouble. That's trouble right there. So I use my lead hand to work my way in and get the shot that I want. And, of course, that was a tough fight for my first fight. That was tough. And believe it or not, although there was all action and three rounds, because it was only for a minute. It was supposed to be three, but they had to, like, do some moving around, whatever. Uh, at, At the end, I went to my corner. I prayed. And... Man, I hope I won, but if I didn't, then that's okay because I already won anyway just by mm-hmm. stepping in there because a lot of folks wouldn't do what I did. And so when I heard those results, man, I screamed to the top of my lungs. <laughs> like literally, when my hand was raised, I raised I raised my other hand too. That's when I started screaming out loud, and I cried in the corner and told myself that I did it. And I told, I said, thank you, God. Thank yeah. you. And it was very emotional for me, but at the same time, it was fun. It, it was a fun event. But So when, when you're in, in a fight, how much of it is you actually processing all the, like, I'm going to set this up and do this next, or how much of it is just well, muscle memory and kind of yeah. instinctive? Listen to my corner. That's the number one thing. Listen to your corner. Like they, they, they know they know exactly what they're telling you or what you need to do. So I listened well and that's what I did. And that's what got me that win because I listened well. Although there were times to where I didn't like hear my coach because, you know, a lot of people was cheering and whatnot, not as loud, but I couldn't really hear her. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really let all the like all the cheering and whatever get to me because that would not have been good. So I just pretended it was just me and my opponent, just us in that ring, like, like like an empty crowd. Like I just imagined that it was just us two in there fighting. No refs, no spectators, no crowd, no coaches, no nothing. It's just us two going at it. Yeah. So would you say there's kind of a misconception because like, like is most of it, coming from the corner telling you what to do it's kind of like him calling plays to you Mm -hmm. more than you just kind of wheeling it (laughs) yeah uh well i I mean of course i've listened to my corner but i actually did wing it uh maybe a little bit yeah but because i wanted to try some of the moves that i've practiced on my own or with you know the the gyms i've been in like russ like jacksonville troop like I, I wanted to practice the moves that I've learned from them and what I've practiced on myself. And next thing you know, you know, I put them into uh, action. And at times they worked, but at other times I felt like I was like lacking defensively because while I was doing, well, while I was doing that, it felt like I got I got caught with a punch, but I didn't go down. 
I, I took it. Mm-hmm. Like, like any punch that I would take, if it's right here, then I'll say, okay, you got me. <laughs> so, you know, I'll get you back. Yeah. But it's more like if, if you hit me while in the ring, there's a guarantee that I'm going to hit you back. Yeah. So, like, you don't just let somebody, like, hit you just like that. You're not doing nothing back. Like, you got to be willing to, you got to be willing to go into the fire to land a shot. Because you stand still, then you're in trouble. That's all. Yeah. So, that's why I'm always willing to go into the fire, go through hell and back, whatever, to get in there and make it a fight. That's just me. That's always been me. Yeah. No matter what. Well, man, thanks for sitting down with me. Uh, where can people find your stuff? Like, your social media? Uh, my uh, Facebook, LaKendrick Devine Jones. And my Instagram? Mm. Can't, well, I know my username, but I just can't remember it, <laughs> honestly. But, yeah, just... Uh, but in my Snapchat, uh, Fighter Life, uh, twenty twenty three, and my TikTok, I will probably say. Uh, You're getting help from the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's the best. She really is. Yeah, uh, my Instagram is Born to Stand Out three. Oh, okay. And as of my TikTok goes. Uh, just give me a second to pull that up here. Hmm. If we can get a signal in the middle of the <laughs> in the middle of the storm, <laughs> hey, hey, hi, you're fine. <laughs> it's all good. All right, sorry it's taking this long, but here we go. Here we go. My TikTok is. Be your own boss, number four. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So. And uh, if people want to take classes from you, where should they go for that? Uh, go to Raw Iron here in Russ. Uh, the address. The address would be 981 W 6th Street, Russ, Texas, 75785. All and- right. And if you need to contact me, my phone number is 430-244-9205. Like I said, if you have any questions, things like that, I'll try my best to answer them. But hey, there, there y'all go. All right, man. Thanks for sitting down and talking with me. Hey, man. no problem, it's sir. Been great. Oh, hi. You made it to the end. Congratulations, not many people do that. Um, while you're here, um, as well, like and subscribe and uh, check out our social media on uh, Instagram and Facebook under the uh, same name as down there. Thanks.